Hey guys, so I thought it would be time for another vlog. I haven't done one of these for a little while, but I'm going to try and make the effort to do these more regularly, but make them shorter. In this one, I thought I'd talk about some really exciting developments that have been happening in my PhD recently. So for those of you who are new here, my PhD is on climate physics, and more specifically, it's about trying to understand how weather that happens in the middle atmosphere affects the weather at the surface. Now, there's a whole video which I'll put up there, um, which describes basically what I'm doing. but. I've had a really cool breakthrough recently. Actually, I suppose two. So to understand what the first breakthrough has been about, I need to talk a little bit more about exactly what it is that I do. So what I'm working on is what's called a dynamical model of the coupling between the stratosphere and the troposphere. What that means is that I'm looking at how, for a given change in the atmosphere above the pole, what happens to the rest of the atmospheric column there, stretching from the surface right the way up to the top of the atmosphere, well, to the top of the stratosphere. Um, what, what, what happens in that con, and how those changes that are induced by that initial change evolve over time. Now the key thing that I've been working on with this dynamical theory is... <clears throat> Think of it like this. Imagine that you have the Arctic Circle, right, which is about 65 degrees north, and uh, y you treat that as a literal circle on the face of the Earth, and you raise a wall, a huge, huge plexiglass wall, from the ground right up to the top of the stratosphere. So you're controlling the amount of air that can get in or out of that boundary over 65 north. And if it's a completely solid plexiglass wall, no air gets in or out. What I've been looking at basically is imagining that that wall has a different permeability at different heights. And that if you squish the atmosphere within the polar circle, within the Arctic circle, and you say put a bit more mass over the top of that wall, you're going to squish the air that's inside the, the wall, and you're going to cause temperature anomalies and pressure anomalies. But if the wall is permeable, or slightly permeable, then some of the air will flow out from doing that. Basically what I've been looking at is understanding in the real atmosphere how permeable the wall is at different heights. Now, I've been doing this for quite some time, and I wasn't getting anywhere. Um, I, I just was stumbling over basic things, and it didn't seem to be making any sense, because all the physics I was putting into my code was completely right, but it was spitting out nonsense. And it turned out the problem, as it always is with me, uh, was something incredibly stupid. I'd been programming my uh, model to tell, uh, to, to analyse how air flowed in and out of the atmosphere, and to make a prediction of um, stuff that goes on within the polar region. I've been telling it that the atmosphere was 30 meters thick instead of 30 kilometers thick. Uh. It's a simple mistake. I should also point out that the atmosphere isn't actually 30 kilometers thick, that's basically 30 kilometers to the sort of mid to upper point of the stratosphere, which is where I'm concerned with. Really the atmosphere is, well, it's actually difficult to say where it stops. It's about 100 kilometers tall. And it's a simple mistake to make. Basically, I, in my head, I was working with units of kilometres, but in order for the physics to work, you have to do it in SI units. So everything has to be seconds, kilograms, newtons, and metres, not kilometres. Once I made that change to my code, everything started making sense, and it was amazing, because my PhD is now finally getting somewhere, it feels like. So that first bit having happened, um, the second breakthrough is a little bit more banal, really. Um, basically, Given that now I have code which actually works and for the physics which I put into it will produce for a given squishing of the polar column, the polar column of air in the Arctic, above the Arctic Circle, what the atmosphere below the squishing point, if you like, uh, is going to do and how much of it is going to flow out and accordingly how much of a pressure anomaly uh, at different points in the atmosphere you're going to have. So you can therefore make a prediction based on that those, that bit of physics that you put into the model. And because you've got a prediction, and you've got observed data, you can test how far from the truth your prediction is. And what I've spent an awful lot of time doing recently is working up a program which basically does the physics, works out a prediction, and then comparing that prediction to the observed data. Now, that's another breakthrough because what that allows you to do is it gives you a quantifiable number for how good your prediction is. But crucially, what it allows me to do is to say, right, well, this bit of physics produced a prediction that was a 4 on the Simon Clark prediction efficiency scale, whereas this second bit of physics 
produced a 3. So the bit of physics that went into the prediction the second time around were worse or further from the truth than the physics that went in the first time around. So what you can do is you can iterate different bits of science that you put into the computer model and then compare the output of that model to reality and see how far apart they are. The further apart they are, the worse the physics, and the closer they are, the closer you're getting to the truth of how air flows in and out of the polar regions. Now this might sound unbelievably dull to some of you, but this kind of stuff makes me really excited. You know, this is why I became a PhD researcher, because science like this is awesome. You're making incremental improvements. I'm doing that a lot. Sorry, I'm getting quite excited. I... Well, I'm... I'm look at all I'm wearing. You make incremental improvements to your understanding and I, you get the impression that you're just pushing the envelope of human knowledge and your tiny little little section of human knowledge, you're pushing it a bit further than it was before. And it's an awesome, awesome feeling. You know, I am the first person to ever look at this result because it's an experiment that I designed myself, I wrote all the code, I did all the analysis, I know what it means and now it's up to me to try and translate that into both scientific language to try and communicate to the scientific community what it means and what it means for understanding of the atmosphere, but also to you guys. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm just geeking out a little bit. Sorry. I realise that some of you are going to be here basically because you followed me through other vlogs like the Oxblog Project, and some of you are going to be here because I do a PhD and you're interested in it, so let me know down there in the comment section um, if you found this interesting. If you have any questions about my PhD, then fire away and I'll try my best to answer them. Um, and yeah, if you'd like to see more about my PhD, let me know because I will try and do these vlogs more regularly with updates on what I've been up to. I just hope that my supervisor never finds them because it'll probably be really embarrassing. In other non-PhD news, next week I am going to be going to an awesome event in London. I've been invited to the Creator Studio, like the Google headquarters in Europe in London, to go to a production workshop for people who make educational videos, like this guy. So I will hopefully be vlogging that experience and taking you with me on what I'm sure will be... A, I, I, I'm so excited. I'm so, so excited. And lastly, back to PhD news. This December, I will be going to AGU 2015, which is the world's largest earth science conference. It's in San Francisco. And yes, I'll be vlogging that experience. And that's going to be incredible. I get to put on an A380 on the way out there. But also, if you're watching this and you're going to be at AGU 2015, please, please comment below, say hello. We can maybe organize, like, if there's, if there's loads of us that are going, because I imagine there's quite a few earth science PhDs who, well, hopefully there's quite a few other science PhDs that watch this, then, you know, say hello and we can sort of, you know, meet up when we're out there. That'd be cool. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. I basically started supporting some people recently and I realised that maybe you don't know about these content creators and I think they're like the best things on YouTube. So, you know, let's share. So I'm just getting ready to go in with the tamarins. Behind me, we're going in with these. These are pied tamarins who um, we just found out, well I just found out, that you can't take a bag in because they are terrified of anything that they can be bundled into. Hello. 